Hey, what's going down, savages? Welcome to episode 14 of La Savage Show. I'm your host, Stéphane Paulin. And before I get to my guest for episode 14, I want to invite everybody to go subscribe to the YouTube channel SVG TV. That's SVG TEEV. What's SVG TV? Well, it's the new YouTube channel where you can find La Savage Show. That's right. La Savage Show is now being uploaded exclusively on SVG TV. So go subscribe today so you don't miss any future episode of La Savage Show. My guest today for episode 14 of La Savage Show, I had the pleasure, the honor of talking with maritime pro wrestler Marcus Burke. I've known Marcus for a few years now. Well, I've followed him on social media. We actually never met before. We never spoke one-on-one -on -one before. I've spoken to him through Instagram and Facebook Messenger, just, you know, commenting on posts and just back and forth a little bit like that. But we actually never met one-on-one. -on -one. I've never uh, worked uh, a wrestling show where he was also on the same card. So we've never been in the same locker room before, never met one-on-one. -on -one. But I was interested in talking with him, uh, not only about his pro wrestling career, but also about uh, being a promoter. He's a promoter now uh, with the promotion North Pro Wrestling out of the Maritimes. And I wanted to talk to him about the challenges of running a promotion during a pandemic. Uh, we had a great conversation, lasted about an hour and a half. Uh, we didn't only speak about um, the challenges of running a promotion. We also spoke about wrestling and other things. I had a great conversation. I'm not going to keep you any longer. I really hope you enjoy episode 14 of The Savage Show with Marcus Burke. First of all, Marcus, thanks a lot for accepting my invitation and welcome to the Savage Show. I appreciate it. No problem at all, man. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. Marcus, uh, I've been in the business of professional wrestling for about five years now and pretty much yep. known who you were for five years. You're, you know, you made a name for yourself as a wrestler and uh, your accolades and all your accomplishments talk for themselves. Now you're trying to make your way into being a promoter. And I've been around promoters and I can only see from afar, I can, but I know that it's a stressful gig. I understand the ins and I, I could see how stressful it is. And now you're trying to run a promotion during a fucking global pandemic. Yeah. And uh, I can only imagine it's t times of thousands now. So if you wouldn't mind talking to me a little bit about that, because I'm quite curious to know all the, the intricacy and the, the challenges of uh, doing North Pro right now. Yeah, well, um, it's a long answer, so I'll try not to be too long-winded, but I guess these these platforms are to be long-winded a little bit anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yes, North Pro, we tip, truthfully, on paper, we had our first show in January of 2020. Now, I'll go back to the buildup of what got me to January of 2020, but that was our first official show under my official kind of brand to myself, first time. And we killed it. You know, we went into a venue that typically doesn't take, they don't take wrestling, you know what I mean? Like it's wrestling as much as we don't like to say, there's still low brow for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like we can look at Steve at NSPW at that Diamant, yeah, he did something. I mean, it's very rare that a wrestling company goes into something like a venue like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Typically, it's uh, Lions Clubs and uh, you know, and bingo halls, and you know, the case may be. Um, but we got this awesome fucking badass venue. We sold it out, and uh, you know, we had awesome surprises. We had great feedback, and what I really want to concentrate on is Canadian talent. A lot of people like obviously Canada is divided in so many fucking territories and so many territories. Like, who works in Alberta? I mean, I can name a couple people and. It used to be like that for the Maritimes in Quebec and Ontario, too. Those were very much separated as well. So just an open, open the door for Canadians to not have to go to the fucking United States. I, you know, I've been there. I hate the United States. No offense to them. I have great American friends. But going to the States is just like, fuck. So why, why can't we do it here? We have all the talent in the world. So that was my train of thought. And it, and it works. It was you know, we were building up to it, and then the pandemic happened. And to answer your question, uh, I'm not really running a fucking wrestling promotion <clears throat> right now because what can I do? Oh, you know, I tried. We had a show. I'm not sure when this is going to air, but we have a show scheduled for February 13th. It was our first show back, and but that's canceled now. That's postponed again. 
you know. Okay, so I didn't know. Sorry, I, it, yeah. it's officially postponed now because you guys yeah, fell yeah. in the red, right? Uh, as yeah, of today exactly. or yesterday? Yeah, you guys have been in the red. I'm not sure what you guys call it. Uh, We're in the us. red. Uh, right. We've been in the red for a fucking long time. I mean, yeah. I, I, I've, I actually spoke to a friend of mine yesterday. She also lives in Moncton and yeah. uh, she's, she's going to be on the podcast as well. We recorded an episode. She works at the hospital and oh, cool. yeah. So we we're talking about that, you know, that, cause I was trying to explain to them like how I've been living my life now for what is seems forever, but it's like, I can't leave my house after eight right now. And during the day, I can't even go to work right now. Like my job is shut down. So I'm at, I'm at home, uh, you know. What's your job? I'm, not, I'm sure your audience already knows, but so I know. I, well, I work at, normally I work in a warehouse. Like I work this yeah. like nice job, seven minutes away, car drive, a really yeah. nice job for a small, you know, uh, small company, but like, I'm happy. It's a great job. I get to work with great hours. Yeah. And, uh, and it's close by, like, I, 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 it works out for me, but now pandemic shuts down everything uh, right before Christmas, no more clients we could ship to. So we're like, you know what, we have to shut down. So now I'm at home, can't even leave. And I talked to my friends in the Maritimes and they're like, oh yeah, no, man, I, I went over to my friend. We went over to yeah, yeah. so-and-so and, you know, and I was uh, like, bro, we had, we had the best summer. We had a, a great fall, like Halloween. We had a little scare around Halloween. That we went in the orange phase where we couldn't fuck around too much. But um, this is really only like our second time in red. And it's just happening. And our cases are very low. They just want to nip in the butt. Um, so I think probably three, four weeks we'll be back out. But it's so, it's very hard to pr like promote a wrestling show. Hey, buy our tickets. Uh, I can't guarantee you there'll be a show. Uh, but buy our tickets in advance. So we have great fans and Yes, you know, uh, they many like uh, close to a hundred of them have already bought prepaid tickets, or you know, bought their tickets, which is great. But yeah. now it's postponed again, so it's just like, you know, it's very hard. And I don't want to do that. I, I want to, you know, I don't want to post. I want to be the guy that puts on the wrestling shows that you know that happens. So it's kind of shitty to. I don't want to be like every month kind of. How, oh, we're gonna have a dad day. I'll postpone again. I know it's kind of the new norm, but I just don't want to be that. I just don't want to be that. So it's so not encouraging. We, it's not encouraging when you have to like right? set all that up, and then you got to cancel everything, and exactly. then your fans after a while. Because look, I'm I'm kind of in the business, so I pay attention on social media. But if you're just a fan, and yeah, I'll get lost in your feed because you're not your feed is not like mine, where it's full of wrestling stuff and the occasional family picture. Yours yeah, rarely it's rarely. right for a lot of people so they, they might have bought the ticket but even if it gets it gets postponed gets postponed dude it's it, it sets, already even if they don't want it to it sets a kind of oh the wrestling show oh that was canceled oh then the next one it's still canceled it just sets something in your mind even if you don't want to the mind is just connected that way where uh, if something is canceled or something happens all the time you're gonna have that predetermined kind of notion of what it is even if it hasn't done anything. So That's we postpone right. it. We're going to see in April. Um, but before we get too far, I just want to go back to the wrestling, the wrestling stuff because we can talk about this pandemic shit forever and I'm sure we will dive into it. Yeah. Uh, but like the first show we had in January, I said that was a buildup. I really started, I started wrestling 17 years ago, which is a fucking long time ago. Yeah. Um, I would say five, five years ago, I started booking shows. It's something I always wanted to do. You know, I've traveled a little bit, but I knew that long term, I made a decision, I'd say probably eight years, seven or eight years ago, that I wanted to be in the business. Whatever the case may be, long term, not just a wrestler. I, I have a good mind for it. I like the business. I can handle the drama for the most part. The <laughs> late dramas are fucking out of this world, but, but you know what? I'm dealing with those two. It's fine. But anyway. Uh, I love all that shit. But just to say, I love wrestling. That's what I want to do. I love that shit. And uh, so five years ago, I started, somebody gave me the shot uh, just to start booking. And I think my first build up to a show, basically, it was like, I think four or five shows. Then we had a big show plan. Okay, we're going to blow this off at this particular arena. And the guy I was looking for was typically doing this. And the, his big shows would draw 250. That was his big shows. His smaller shows would go from, 50 to 100 people so not saying that it was from the ground but i mean he just gave it to me and he's like you know this is your budget 
do what you can do. So I'm like, okay. So after five shows, our big buildup event got 1,200 people. So I'm like, boom. So I, I kind of booked all of I, I booked my storylines, which I thought was going to be good. We're going to be good. Uh, we, we got some outside talent, which always helps, of course. And uh, we sold all the fucking tickets out, 1,200 tickets. So I'm like, wow. Okay. To me, I'm like the bar is set already up here. Um, obviously that you know you gotta go down up and down yeah. up and down up and down but so i started booking for him then and then obviously i kind of i made some mistakes in the booking but then that's how you learn you kind of fuck up and you're like oh how did i fuck up it's like it's, it's like a wrestling match i already i always i know that too where i want let's say i want to do this cool thing in my match and i do this cool move and <clears throat> the crowd goes <clears throat> i'm like okay well i'm gonna try it again do it again in a different kind of scenario. Do the move. If the crowd still goes, well, guess what? I love that move, but that move doesn't do anything. So I'm going to stop doing that. Move. So I'm kind of doing that. I'm taking that kind of mindset into promoting a wrestling show. So if I see something I'm like that's a good idea and we do it and the crowd just falls flat, like it doesn't mean I'll give up on it right away. I'll still try to figure it out. But sometimes an idea is just doing from the first, and like right, right from the start. I mean, you just have to. You know, you have to learn from those fucking mistakes and those scenarios. So uh, I did three years of that. Finally, from just wrestling and stuff, I'm really cheap on the road. So I saved my money and uh, I bought myself a wrestling ring finally. And then it was little by little. I started doing my own shows, but under the umbrella that I was booking for before. The guy from Halifax that I was booking for who really helped me. Basically, I moved into where I lived and started booking shows under that banner. But I always, listen, I, I was cool with that because he was helping me out. And I was like, you know, he really kind of helped me out. So I, I definitely didn't have a problem to help him out, help him out that way. And it would still help me where if I would fail, then it's still not my brand. You know what I mean? It's not something that, okay, I'm still making mistakes at this. You know what I mean? So I, it was always kind of going slow, but slow and steady, slow and steady for me. So long story long, finally, I get to, I'm like, I'm going to rebrand. I got everything I need. You know, I, I saved the money from all the shows. I bought a big, a high quality projector, a screen, ca you know, cameras, everything I fucking need. Curtains, which you think, oh, curtains, everybody has curtains. But then when you pay $250 for a curtain, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I need a uh, fucking 30 of those. So I got all that stuff. I got ringside stuff, everything. I got a, a you know, uh, brand new skirts, everything, brand new ropes. Just looks fucking mint. So I get to the fucking January show and it just explodes. And now in the pandemic. So long story long, we're in the pandemic now and fuck my life. I, you know what? It's it's almost a curse. I I saw I watched the uh, the majority of your show on you when you put it on YouTube there a few months ago, yep. and uh, I mean quality. I mean for Bravo, and I I sent you a message. I was like, man, yep. like I I pay attention to me. Maybe it's my mind works the same way a little bit. Like the little intricacy, like the the little details, like the the way the lighting was hitting the ring and it was focusing maybe like two or three rows into that, and then after that you're all those little details to me when yeah. I watch a match, I go, man, I like that. I like that yeah. style of wrestling that like kind of like Japanese, more quiet. And the people are really, you could tell that people were invested in the matches, you know, when they, yeah. you get their crowd reaction, but it's not a constant ruckus of like, rah, rah. it's just a, a real good contest in the squared circle and people are really enjoying the match and reacting the right way. It was, it was a good match. Like your match included. It was like, I, I can, I can only imagine you're, you're, you're promoting this big show and you're also wrestling, fucking wrestling in the main event for so, yeah. the NWA fucking yeah. belt, like 10 pounds of gold. Everybody knows that championship, like to, to juggle those two things. I mean, Bravo, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. And I was not in the main event. Uh, the main event was oh, uh, Dick Durning versus Channing Decker and uh, Marco Estrada. Uh, not, not that it matters. It's just that, you know, I always like to have, I look, truthfully, a lot of guys that you bring in don't want to lose. And I don't want to put those guys against some of my guys and get them to, to lose. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck about losing. Man. I've been losing for 17 years. I'm still <laughs> here. Uh, so I can head. So, you know, and plus, I really want to showcase the Canadian side of it. I think Dick Durning is the best guy around here. Marco Estrada, as you know, is a fucking man. 
and Quebec and uh, Channing Decker are just kind of, we brought him in a year before that, maybe a little over a year before that. And our fans just love him. He came in and like said, all right, like I want a spot here. And he fucking proved it. And I'm like, yeah, so it cost me the whole thing. It's like, okay, well, we're taking our profits down just by bringing him because it's from Ontario. And if he's coming from Ontario, he's always going to bring more people. If he's driving or for flying him in, he's going to be by himself, but we're increasing our, um, our cost by a good 15% of what we would typically spend, but he's worth it. You know what I mean? Even I'm not saying he's going to bring a hundred more people, but for me, it's not about, you hear that all the time as promoter promoters. They say, well, did that guy bring 10 people? Then he's not worth it. But that's not really the case. If the guy really sucks, then yeah, I mean, and you, whatever the case, but if you bring good guys in and keep a high quality of wrestling, then that's what sells. I'm not looking for just bringing a guy in, Oh, he, I, I just spent fucking 3500 bucks on this guy. So the rest of my rosters, I'm just going to fucking pay him 20 bucks and get the shittiest roster I can get just to get people in. And then what what happens? People are like, bullshit. And you get the guy that's talking to you 3500 bucks coming in and probably just kind of, you know. Collecting another paycheck sometimes, right? He doesn't have a paycheck for him, you know. So the whole show kind of stinks. And so for me, it's very important to keep a high level of, of, of quality on the shows. And that's to go back to what I said. A lot of promoters say, well, did he bring anybody in? But not right there, but long term, we all do. As a quality of events, people like maybe Chang Decker was on, was on second match last time, but don't remember him because he stands out. Lil yeah. Blaine stands out. You know, the, the dynamite, he stands out. Marco Estrada fucking stands out. Matt Angel stands out. So all those guys bring different aspects to, to a show. If I look at it, something you mentioned when you're explaining um, the way you book your shows, Yeah. Like if I look at your show, you're right. You're stacked head from from first match to the last to the mid match to the to the last match. You gotta you gotta be able to sometimes. I know they talk a lot about egos. You know they got some some of these guys might have bigger egos, but it seems like the more these guys are willing to just be a part of a great wrestling event month after month after month, it doesn't really become about them it becomes about i see more and more uh of that i feel in professional yeah. wrestling instead of being really only about one star or maybe one or two guys and then the rest are just like hey kid you want a shot i'll put you on one on third match but instead you're booking marquee names from every single match like oh, i've heard of him oh i've seen him he's always here yeah. boom 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 Yeah. And then people are going to go, I'm going to pay this 15, this 20 bucks to go yeah. see this promotion. It's we, great to uh, see. Yes, I appreciate that. And we do, a, we try to do a good job of building our guys. And like, like I mentioned, the little play and sabotage and dynamite Dylan Davis. And those are my local guys that, you know, um, they started off they're young. And when I started off with, with, I was very much of building something again, it's, I, I didn't start from day one of bringing everybody in and, You know, it was a build of shows for sure. And now those guys are paying off because they have experience. They, they've worked in front of big crowds. They've, you know, traveled to Ontario, Quebec, States, wherever the case may be. So they've experienced going into a locker room, not knowing anybody. And then like, you know, I think you worked the sabotage guys a couple times, right? We did. Yeah. When they first got in there, they, it's not like they knew anybody, but they've been in locker rooms before. And, you know, maybe they just adapt to fucking places and that's how you get better. Yeah, You know, you trust, you trust the process and you just go through the fucking motions and you go to Montreal, you drive 12 hours to Montreal and your match fucking sucks and it only lasts seven minutes. You're like, well, that fucking sucks. And you drive yeah. back home and you get home, you're pissed, but you can't wait to get back on the road again. You know, you're like, fuck, you want to go back on the road and do it again because that's how we do, man. That's how we get better. And yeah, that's it. I want to go say before, um, it, We, the stack cards and stuff uh, i i definitely agree and it's hard we talked about egos some guys have bigger egos which you've seen as well um i i listen i'm actually people think i love to put myself over but i'll put myself over in this case i love being a leader of guys and it, like to, to show them the show the overall show some guys like that, that work with me hate to fucking lose and i get those guys to lose if like I explained to them, like, yeah, listen, you, you know what, you know, I, I'm not just making you lose because I think you're bad or whatever the case may be. I explain what the fucking situation is. And even if they don't agree, they respect me enough that, okay, he knows what he's doing. So fuck, let's just, let's just do it. And 
they're not they want to come back so they're not going to have a shitty match just because they're not winning you know and which yeah. some guys in some places do you said something earlier um, about uh, being able to recognize the things that don't work even though you like them. There's yeah. something fucked up about that because even me, I don't have as much experience as a guy like you, but look, when I start clicking on a move and I'm like, start adding it in matches and I love landing the move, but it fucking never gets anything. No reaction. And you're just forced to like, well, I got, I got to replace it with something else. You know, yeah. either it's something in my comeback or in my shine. You're like, you got to re just, just replace it yeah. or do something different. But yeah. I love how you, you made the, the, the attachment to, well, same thing when you're running a promotion, you might think that ah, dude, this matchup is going to work and it falls flat. And you're like, no, okay. Maybe it's just, they were having an off day. Let's try yeah, it again. Try it again and, then, try something. and then you're like, ah, oh, fuck. No, it doesn't work, but I thought it would work. But, and then you got to, I, I think a lot of people, they just, they have a hard time just even just tweaking that, like just moving on. Like, all right, we got to try something new. I, I, I've, yeah. I've battled with that even in, uh, you know, even uh, we all have, we all have, of course, I had done moves for way too long that just every time I hit it, it just fell flat or did something. I'm like, people, I know it's not me. You know, sometimes you hit something. It's not you. You want it to be you, but it's not fucking you. You know yeah. what I mean? So it just it comes with the territory. And by the time you learn all that shit, and you know what to do. It's too fucking late. You're too old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, and happens. you can't do it anymore. You can't do it anymore. That's yeah. the beauty of wrestling. Wrestling doesn't owe me anything. And if it's if all of this just kind of it, it crumbles in my face and I have to sell everything, or even if it just, you know, it just just puts me in debt for whatever the case may be. Yeah. Uh, it was worth it, man. It was fucking worth it. It was worth it. Uh, I, I, this has been my job for the last fucking six years seven years six years wow so you know i have a house uh, with my wife who, you know we have two cars they're not the most expensive cars but fuck resin paid for that so yeah hey, all right you know it's your career so, you get to say you you know like people ask me what i do for a living listen i poor wrestling doesn't pay the bill for me so i i'm a warehouse worker yeah. that wrestles on weekends yeah. the fact that you've been able to say you're a fucking professional wrestler and uh, actually yeah. your bill pays your house, your roof, your cars, make yeah. a life for yourself. That's, that's an accomplishment by itself. Cause from what I've seen, professional wrestling is an unforgiven business. Like there's, yeah, yeah. It doesn't forgive anything. And Nobody. And people hold on for too long and people almost feel like wrestling like owes them, but wrestle re wrestling will keep being wrestling. Wrestling doesn't owe you anything. If you don't enjoy the time, like wrestling have got, has gotten me over to, overseas it's made me wrestle in front of tens of thousands of people uh makes me made, made me see things that i've never seen in my life you know what i mean like i would never pay for a, a ticket to go to africa you know what i mean it's just not yeah. that africa is bad it's just it's not a place and i like to be on the beach and just whatever it's not the, my, my my destination but i got to go to africa i got to wrestle in africa you know what i mean so uh, that and so the people you meet the people you yeah. meet, I've met some of the most interesting, inspiring, motivating, messed up, like just my kind of people where I'm like, oh my God, like this is what I've been missing this whole time, this whole, yep. I met some great yeah. people, made some great friendship, but I call them family. It's like, a, it's you know, it's like family at a certain point. You make this connection. That term brother is thrown around way too oh. much, <laughs> but uh, it still means something to me, man. You know I mean, if I say, I'm like, hey man, then, you know. <laughs> Man, brother, every time I write a text or I send a message, I'm like, is it man today? Maybe I called him brother last <laughs> night. Maybe I'll switch it up this time. Some, I wanna... some guys, they get a brother every single time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, those <laughs> have to be close. The real guys. Hey, isn't it funny that um, when you first started, uh, I, got, I think I, I'm not sure if it was from your trainer or someone, but basically, like, this guy looks, I think it was Steve who did like the NSPW promoter. He's like, this guy looks exactly like you. And you want to you wanna hear a funny story? When I, even before I started wrestling, I have a friend, I've, I've, I'm from the Maritime, so I've lived in London. You? Yeah, I'm from the Maritime. I'm from Trackady, New Brunswick. <laughs> you didn't know that? Maybe, maybe you told me like a long time ago, but. Yeah. Yeah. So I've lived. I lived in Moncton for a few years. I went to college. I went to college in Dieppe, and yeah. I, I lived there after until 2004 until I moved to Toronto. But uh, so I have my a lot of my friends, families still living in Moncton, 
And I have a friend, she was like, I know Marcus, this guy, he's a wrestler. He looks exactly like you. I'm like, yeah, she sends me a picture. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, you know, yeah, it kind of looks like me. And then when I got into the business, and I right away, people are like, hey, you look, you know, you look like Marcus Burke. I'm like, oh. we have the same nose. Like, it's like a round nose ish. We got the same. Got the same it's like world. a button. Yeah. Messed yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Dude, my dad used to hang out with Tragedy all the time. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe I, I, don't I, know. I know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, am, am I, I might be wrong here, but um, your, does your dad work at a hospital as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have a friend and I had his girlfriend on the podcast yesterday, but he also works at the hospital. They both do the same job. And he told me, he's like, yeah, I go see uh, some of the wrestling shows sometimes. And Marcus is there and his, I see his dad and I speak with his dad and stuff. Like oh, that, that's so. awesome. Yeah. My dad yeah. Is, a, is a badass. Yeah. He works at the hospital and um, he just got his vaccine. So super, super happy for him. Yeah. My, my friend too, they both got both doses and I've got a few more friends that are uh, paramedics up, uh, up North and uh, New Brunswick. They also got their doses and stuff. So it's, yeah, really, it's like really for really them, awesome it's, 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 it's necessary for them. Like my dad works with, with, uh, uh, I forget what the, what it's called, but it's, it's patients with cancer. It's not, I forget what it's called. Uh, but you know what I mean? So he can't, he, he can't mess around with that stuff. You no, know what I mean? If he all. gets it, he passes it on whatever so he's got it he's happy it, it's it's really nice to see and uh, you know you got to encourage the people that uh that take it you know you got to make an example out of them it's great to see yeah it. i mean dude people I, i'm into whatever you want to do bro if you don't want to get it don't get it but mm -hmm. shut the fuck up shut the fuck up i don't need to hear your fucking conspiracy theory on why people shouldn't get vaccinated don't get vaccinated don't get your kids vaccinated, man. You can have them on schools, bro. We'll segregate you too. Go. Yeah. yeah but no you're absolutely right, though. I'm all for whatever people want to think, but I mean, look, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't force anybody to get vaccinated. You only get vaccinated, yeah. don't get vaccinated. I, if I get the chance to get vaccinated, I'm gonna get vaccinated. Like me too, I, of course. I want to yeah. travel. I want my kids to be able to travel and to be able to, yeah. to fuck, man. It's gotta, we gotta overlook over this this whole divide yeah. thing. Yeah. It's bullshit. Do you know what I put in my body, bro? Do you think I give a fuck about a vaccine? Come on, man. Come on, dog. Man, uh Another thing, uh, before we go, uh, I see you're doing a lot of content online and, um, I really enjoy that, man. I, I like to see that I, you're taking the opportunity during this pandemic to put some more content with your game of throne and stuff. And, uh, yeah. I, I like it, man. I enjoy it. It's, it's, it's fun to see. I appreciate it. And it's yeah. funny that people are supporting it too. Like we started, we just had a, the Maritime is very Facebook driven and Instagram driven. It's not Twitter at all. It's, you know, bigger cities and, and very much America. Yeah. Uh, Maritimes, it's not a big, a big seller, Twitter is. So it's Facebook and Instagram. So I never, I, that's all where I've got all my kind of put my attention, especially to Facebook. And um, so for fun, I'm like, fuck, let me start this YouTube account. We already had one just for wrestling. And we didn't, we never really promoted it. Or promoted it. And we had like 250 sus subscribers. Um, but yeah, like five weeks ago, I'm like, fuck, let's just start having fun. And we did some reacting videos and different stuff. And yeah, I think we increased by 500 subscribers already. And uh, yeah, man, I saw some of your videos, so a lot of views right away. Like, you know, the minute yeah. you started. So, but it's good content though. Man, it's, when, good content. it's fuck, man. People make like, I enjoy simple, but really funny and entertaining content, man. I follow these people on YouTube. I mean, they're outrageous sometimes. And I'm like, it's so stupid what they do, but I'll stand there and I'll sit there and me and the wife will just be like, man, we've been watching this fucking video for an hour. Yeah. I'm like, I can't watch this anymore. Like, I, I know. I, know, like, I, know. <laughs> I love YouTube, man. YouTube gets me and like, I go for hours just like in the tunnel of YouTube. It's like click after click. Oh, recommend Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but you you listen to Rogan too as well, right? You're a Rogan fan. I do. Yes. Um, funny enough, I just started to get back into him. The Spotify deal, I was super happy for him. I was I wasn't one of the haters who were like, "What the fuck, dude? dude Joe Rogan has been doing it forever." Yes, he was getting paid, but now he's getting paid. Yeah. So I I, I just I didn't follow him right away on Spotify. I have Spotify, you know, I pay for that membership because I, I listen to music all the time and those ads kill me. But I started listening to him again before bed and it's perfect. You can, there's a nighttime setting on the Spotify. So I put it on 30 minutes, listen to him, 
they're all typically chill. They're astrophysicists. So by yeah. 20 minutes, my brain is somewhere else. Like, oh, you know, so that, and I've been listening to a lot of uh, Bruce Pritchard lately. I don't know if you, uh, if you go on YouTube, it's uh, something to wrestle with, I think it's called. Yes, I and think goes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, yeah, he goes deep into, because he was part of WWE forever, WWF, like since WrestleMania 3, I think. Yeah, so he, he goes, he breaks down every pay-per-view from when he started and the matches and all that stuff. So it's pretty badass. I heard like about the that. The stuff, which is kind of what I'm into, you know what I mean? So he kind of breaks yeah. down his thought process of the things he booked and then the Jim Cornette comes in and he Jim Cornette has a different mindset and how he books things. And I'm like, well, I love this. So yeah. I've been kind of getting into this now. I, I enjoy podcast. I, I listen to Rogan. I also listen to uh, the sports podcast, the Dan Lebertar show. I don't know if you know about it. Was um, I know yes. him, but I, I know the show, but I've never. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Uh, I enjoy it because it's not. I love sports. I love sports news, for, especially football, basketball. I'm a huge football and basketball fan. But so, who's your, who's your, who's your football team? Steelers. Oh, buddy, what a great year to end. Yeah, yeah. It's so, so intense. Like, you guys started off so hot, but by the end, you could tell it was like whatever was happening was happening, and then it's too late. I was trying to explain to my son. My son is, is a huge Seahawks fan. He's, like, full-blown into to football now, and uh, he was saying, like, I don't understand. You, you Fucking Roethlisberger was doing so well, and then at the end of the year, I said, listen, he is 30 – some years old he's yeah, been he's in the league through. for a long time yeah. he just came back from an, like a crazy surgery and he's getting hammered game at, there's no yeah. only an amount of game he's going to be able to last at like 80 plus percent after he crumbles under 80 he fucked up his knee you could tell after he messed up his knee on one game after that it was everything he couldn't throw down the field there was there was just something missing and i i knew they were going to get to the playoffs but i knew that they just with the injuries on defense, it was it, it was bad news for them. But Cleveland Browns, I mean, I'll, I'll applaud them. They played a fucking hell of a game. So I'm yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. yeah it's so always hard to see, it's always hard to see like who plays well and who doesn't play well because let's say the Cleveland Browns played okay, which mm -hmm. they obviously played well. But uh, if the, the Steelers completely shit the bed, then I mean, you know, what I mean, I'm not sure. I didn't truthfully. I don't think I watch a game. But um, I, I was watching the stats while it was going on. You know what I mean? God damn. I was sitting on the couch and my wife picked her head up. It was like 14 nothing. She looked at me. She's yeah. like, are you okay? Oh, yeah. The, the snap. And the, the yeah, dude. Right it right. was 28 nothing yes, in the yes, first absolutely. quarter. Yes, yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. I was I like. Started, I started watching after the first quarter. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's this going on? <laughs> I came to my office. I fucking toked up, and I was like, "All right, I need to chill for a bit because I'm gonna fucking, yeah. I'm gonna kill." Yeah, really um, listen, now Marcus. I watched, uh, Tampa Bay versus uh, the Saints the other day, and I'm Tom Brady. What's up, bro? What, like, dude? Forty-three years old, and you look just looking at him, like skin, everything, like body, like oh, dude, like what the fuck, man? Like I know he makes millions of, if not billions of dollars. I know his wife makes more money than him, but. They take Ooh. care of their bodies. It's like LeBron. They spend, I don't know, it's a million dollars a year on their yeah. uh, nutrition. But I mean, come on, bro. Let's go. You got a little something in you. You know what I mean? Not because he's Jack, that he's not Jack, that he's not on something. Lance yeah. Armstrong was on something for a decade. You know what I mean? He wasn't Jack. It was just those guys are have the best stuff, the best doctors, the best nutrition, everything, and plus natural talent. I'm not taking anything away from Tom of Brady. Course. Tom Brady's a fucking man. Uh, well, yeah, crazy. Forty-three, new team. Let's go. I, I think Philip Rivers today retired. He's been. In he I saw a, a meme. Time. It's funny. I saw a meme of Rivers that said, "Like, oh, me and my wife want to focus on starting a family, but he has like nine kids." Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I retired because yeah, we're gonna focus on starting a family. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Same thing with Breeze. I think Breeze, I watch these guys that play and they, they inspire me because even LeBron, like I look at LeBron and I look at the style of basketball he plays and the fact that he's not only tall, but he is a massive human being, like just yeah. built different. And you watch him physically, you go, there's no way that guy can jump and do all those things. And he does them every fucking night. And then you go, wow. I, I mean, listen, you're, you're what? You're mid thirties, right? I'm 38. 38. 38. All right. Yeah, so I just, I just turned 38. Yeah. But I mean, come on, bro. Yeah, you're in great, you're in great fucking shape too, though, right? 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 been two decades of work. You know, it's not like I don't pick it up and let it go for a month or two. I I don't I can't remember the last time. Well, with the quarantine, but I still worked my ass off here. I have awesome home workouts. And yeah, not the same that I want, but you know, I still get it done. And uh, but I don't like I don't take time off. You know, I'll take a week. I'll take a full week every six months, probably just a week off and just just chill. From training, you're talking about from training from training. Yeah, dude, you're good. Even- I take zero fucking time off. Like yeah, really. hey, I'm like I'm. You're like, running right now, right? Yeah. I don't run the much now. I because yeah. I did the marathon thing where I ran for a yep. thirty plus days to train for this crazy shit that I did. I yeah. lost like a bunch of muscle mass because your body sheds like you're of like course. you're too fucking heavy, dude. You're weighing nine. I was one ninety six. I've dropped down to one seventy nine in thirty days, and yeah. I I ran and now I'm like you know what? My wife bought me the a few weights for Christmas. She was able Good. to find a few here in Montreal, and now she I'm trying to paid quadruple the price. I, okay. She was like, you don't want to know. She had to yeah. order some online, pay for the yeah. fucking shipping. I'm like, you're crazy. Whoa. Yeah, 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 Thank yeah. You. Best Thank wife you. ever. But yeah, I, I now I'm working on putting some some mass back on, you know, because I'm like. But I've had I have some issues with my back and stuff that I'm getting worked out during this pandemic. The fact that I'm not resting anymore, so like my body's yeah. feeling a lot better. I've been dealing with concussions too. I had I had a concussion like two or three weeks right before the pandemic. I was out for a while, with with or without the pandemic, I was out. Ooh, I got and, a concussion story if you want to hear it after yeah. after you're fucking done. I got a, a fucking shitty concussion story. I look, you know, uh, maybe you know about my background. I did martial arts before and yeah. I've got numerous concussions. But before this, I'd had three or four documented concussions. Some were bad. Some were, you know, part of the part of the biz. Right. And yeah. uh, but this one, I what happened, what the doctor think that happened is that they think I got concussed a weekend before because I told uh, them I, I, I was feeling fucked up during the week. Just weird and i got something had happened in a match the saturday before but i didn't really pay much attention to it but i after he told me that i was like yeah that makes a lot of sense and and then i made i had a match and one small boot to the head i went right away in the match and i was like after that i was like oh you know i felt okay that night and i got home and woke up monday and then I, i was like yeah something's up and Right away, I got. I went to see someone. They told me, "Yeah, dude, like, you're, there's some issues here. You gotta, you gotta take it easy." And so I was out for a while, and then the pandemic hit. So I kind of, I was like, "Well, I guess we're all in the same boat." I took yeah. advantage of it, and then I really made sure to make number one, my make sure my head was right, but also like I had other issues that kind of flared up. You know, you wrestle every week, and you you don't feel those things. You're just like, "Yeah, I'm fucking sore. It's part of the business." Yeah. I lift weight five times a week and then I go destroy Like, yeah, it's part yeah. of the, it's, it, that's what it is. You know, when I get up in the morning, it takes a while before I, I cannot limp on my, like, it's part yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So a I life, accepted it's not it. not just wrestling, but a lifetime of sports. You know what I mean? It's exactly. Happening. So, but when you stop everything and those, the, everything goes away except for a few issues. And then you're like, okay, let's work on that. So I've been, I've been working hard on that, but uh, it feels good. To be honest, like I, I miss being in the ring, uh, but my body is like, dude, they've never felt better. So I'm uh, one one side of it. Helps. Do you um, before I tell my concussion story? Do you have a, a do you do yoga at all? Do you, do you try that yet? I am uh, for I just these last few weeks there. I've, I stretch every night, and I'm gonna really like I'm trying to make some time for yoga. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. It's, it's I'm, definitely a game changer. I, I have huge uh, shoulder problems and neck problems. I mean, just Again, lifetime of sports and wrestling at, mm-hmm. uh, at a high level. So it just you know, you take you have those thirty minute main events, whatever the case may be. Is what it is. Yeah. Um, so the yoga really, really helps. It really kind of. I, I can touch my toes again. You know, I haven't been able to touch my toes in a long time. So it's That's been good. the last since since the pandemic. I really started to kind of go on yoga. And like, like I said, I can touch my my toes. I'm the most flexible I've been since I, my teens. You know, so. That's that's good. Uh, when I was doing the running thing uh, in September, October, obviously my uh, therapist was like, "You got to stretch and foam roll every night." So I got into stretching at that moment because it was necessary. If I didn't stretch, 
stretch after I couldn't go for a run the next day. So I needed, like, I was in that mode of like body hurts, just keep going, stretch as much. And it changed a lot. I was like, like you, like I can touch my toes now. I find myself rather flexible for, you know, the, you know, the age I'm at and the, the pain and the, the, the mileage I have, but uh, go ahead. How I want to hear. Yeah, go. How old are you? 40. You're 40. Look I'm at 40. You. Old man. Damn, old man. Fuck, man. I got some gray hair on this shit, man. It's, oh, boy. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's I'm, why. I'm hiding mine. I'm hiding mine. I, I've gone um, pandemic style, but uh, I, I haven't shaved it off. I'm like, fuck this shit, man. My, my wife's a hairdresser, so it's perfect. She has her tapers yeah. at home, so <laughs> she, you can't tell, but she turns my beard, too. Yeah. Um, so the concussion. Yeah, so last year was a hectic year. Um I was doing the before my North Pro January event. By the way, if you're still listening, add YouTube, go to YouTube, North Pro, subscribe. We got a bunch of stuff there. You'll have a good time. Um, yeah, right? Cheap life. <laughs> um, I was wrestling against someone and we were working this angle with my wife. I've never brought in my, my wife in. So we're like, oh, we're going to bring her in. And because everyone that comes to the wrestling shows, my wife's at the door. It's very much family business, right? Yeah. She's at the door. She's nice. She likes people. People like her. So we did a thing. I'm like, okay, I've done something with, with my dad before. And that drew a fucking shitload of people with a wrestler kind of fucking hit my dad. It was all work and people tripped out. And I was like, a couple of years later, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that kind of similar thing, but with my wife this time. And I sold her on it and it was fucking badass. But during the match, basically I put, I had cuffs on while my wife's in the ring, whatever the fuck. And the, the guy, the, the spot was, okay, it's, we never do this, but a chair shot to the head. I'm like, I'm not Mick Foley. I'm not Attitude Era, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be, it's gonna be protected. But I had the cuffs on, and he fucking went for it, and like really swung the chair, put my fucking hands up with the cuffs, and when he hit, he hit because I'm like, okay, hit the fucking cuffs, it'll make a fucking crazy ass sound. People think I'm dead, and he did, but he hit me so hard that my the cuffs went deep into my skull like oh, whack wow. and i'm like oh fuck and my, my head just started pissing blood everywhere and i'm like oh man for visually i'm like okay i gotta sell this so i'm putting my head down so the blood comes this way so people can see but i'm like whoa that was intense but we go through the whole stuff and i'm bleeding all over the place and thankfully my wife actually we had so I take the fuck of the, the spot was just to get some color. So if you're new to wrestling business, it's just cutting your forehead. It's a fucking crazy thing that we do, but we do it sometimes when necessary. But when I took the chair shot, I didn't have to do anything. It was just like, it was pissing blood. So I just threw the fucking blade away and I'm like, well, okay. And I, we put my wife in a white cloth because I'm like, I'm going to cut myself and bleed all over you. Oh, and, shit. You know, the whole thing. It was the whole thing where, you know, he was going to hit her, but I'm, I'm bleeding. I put myself over her and he hits me instead uh, after the fact. It was great. It fucking ended up great. But uh, so I'm in the back. I'm like, oh, damn. So I'm getting uh, stitched up in the back because we have somebody. So I'm getting stitched up in the back. And, uh, I'm like, okay, we go through the, the final setup. I'm like, I might stay out of, you know, I'm not going to work too hard tonight. I'm really feeling fucking shitty. And obviously I drive my car and I'm like, with my wife next to me, I'm like, after maybe a minute, I pull over. I'm like, I can't drive. I'm like, just fuck completely. So she drives, whatever the case. And so the effects, I'm, I'm a tough wrestler. So I don't even mention it later. I, you know, keep wrestling every weekend because NSPW is going to put the fucking championship on. So, you know, what I'm not going to do is start taking time off after I put fucking four or five years into this company. And finally, they want to put the fucking title on me. And you know how it is. And sometimes like it, if it skips your turn because you're injured, it might not come back around to you. And OK, listen, it's just a championship. Don't be a merc. And I'm not a merc. I've said no to many most championships. I say no to because then you have to come back and it's a whole thing yeah. but NSPW, to me. It, it's fucking awesome you know what i mean like yeah. i love going there they're always fucking full they got the fucking really good wrestlers and typically it's always quebec guys that win the championship you know obviously there's tyson dukes and there's been exceptions but i was very proud to be one of those exceptions and uh so i'm like i'm just gonna just go and wrestle and is that Le Diamant too so it's like the yeah. new venue versus marco 
Marco never gets pinned, so I'm like, I'm, I got to pin Marco. <laughs> and uh, so I do that. It went well, but I, I was still feeling the after effects of it, of that fucking particular uh, uh, concussion. And the next match, I was wrestling Channing Decker. Now, you know who Channing Decker is, and he's kind of, you know, he has a particular style. I'm like, I am, I'm an SPW champion. I'm fucking going for it. Like, we're doing the whole fucking, and one of the last fucking spots, we're going, he protected, I told him about my head, he protected me the whole time, he's fucking great. Um, we had a, a spot where they have guardrails. We put a table between the apron of the ring and the guardrail, and I was laying on the table. And he came up, went on top, did a, a moonsault, a backflip right on top of me, boom. But I was scooched up too close to the apron. It's 100% my fault. So he landed where I should, it should have been on my chest because I should have been pushed out, pushed out more. My head, for some reason, was right in the middle of the fucking table. So he fucking landed on top of my head and ran right through the cement. My, he was on top of me. My head smashed on the cement and like his weight, he was like a 200 pounds, crashed on top of my head, busted my, my head open in the back again. And like another huge concussion. It's like back to back, like a month, like four weeks. I was always feeling like shit. I'm like, I'll work through it. And that that happens. You're like, fuck. That sucked, bro. That was yeah. horrible. I felt that for like, but guess what I did? I didn't take any fucking time off. And uh, I think I took one show off in, um, I had a, it was a pretty big show, but I had to take it off. I think it was like 600 people there, but I'm like, I can't fucking go. And, uh, but yeah, right back, right back to work. And so the pandemic was kind of like a, a good thing for me overall. But, uh, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to look at it that way, let's just say. It's funny, you tell that story right now, and I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, well, yeah, makes sense to me. There are 99% of people listening to this are not what like, like, what do you, wait, 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 you got, you got concussed, and he went back, and he got concussed, like, and he's kept wrestling? Yeah. And this guy's great. And I'm like, me all this time, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's funny i don't know about your wife but i know my wife she obviously she just like you she's a you know she supports you and she mm -hmm. my wife came to the show bring the kids you know i got two kids they come to the show and stuff it's fun but she you know she looks at it and she goes man she'd come sometimes i'd wrestle you know you wrestled twice a weekend sometimes three times you call, she, she get home on sunday night you get into that door when everyone and she looks at me and she sees it. She's like, God damn, like, are you, are you going to keep yeah. fucking doing this? And I'm like, I'm going to go take a yeah. shower and I'll see you in 15 yeah, minutes for dinner. Minute. Yeah. It's yeah. like, and it's like, it seems crazy, but it keeps my demons asleep. So what the fuck? Why not? Right. I, well, that's I how I see it. I saw your, uh, a bit of your interview with Frankie and he said the same thing. And uh, I'm, it's, it's, we all look at it a different way. I mean, that's definitely a way of, of looking at it. I guess mm -hmm. it's what it is, really. It's just the 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 physical kind. Of, I need that physical therapy, whatever. It yeah. Is. So yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like I I got addicted to something when I was doing mixed martial arts that I never thought I would ever get addicted to, and it was it wasn't the pain of getting hit or punched. It was the like you just explained the physical pain that I get to put my body through and to test. Just how far I can stretch this fucker out and then next day go, can I do it again? Oh, fuck, I could do it again. Let's do it again. This time I take it more. It's, it's, it's why I think I have this love-hate relationship with running because if you ask me on nine times out of ten, I'll be I fucking hate running. And yeah. then everybody looks like, yeah, but you fucking post about running all the time. I said, yeah, because when I have shit to work out of my head, I put my fucking running shoes on and I go outside and that's that's where I work out my shit. If I have, I told this to a friend yesterday, if I have something to do as a decision to make and I don't know, I have a hard time. I put my shoes on, I go for a 10 K run. I'll tell you something after that. I'm like, my decision's made, you know? Yeah. I'm so, like that with weights. Yeah. Yeah. When it's when I'm angry, not angry, but when I'm upset about something, whatever the case may be, or when I'm thinking about something important, I go lift like weights and like heavy weights. It, it doesn't mean truthfully, I'm not sure if you're the same way. I might not even be thinking about that particular, the, the subject the whole time, but I'll have an answer for that, for that subject when I'm clear headed, you yes, know, that's it's not it. cloudy of fucking like, about not to call you to say to whatever the fuck, whatever the sentiment is, yeah. I'll be clear headed. And then I'm like, okay, I can make a typically a good decision on that. 
Yeah, it's exactly what it is for me too. It's not like I'm working out and running and trying to work that shit out. It's just when I'm running, everything that's not necessary in my head just kind of disappears. And then I'm like, oh, it's a simple answer. It's a, the decision gets made way faster. It, it's been part of my life for so long. It's like, it's like a habit now, right? It's like working out for me. I can't go. If I go more than a 24 hour period, I, I'm not really nice to be around. And my wife will yeah. attest to that every single time. She's like, go work out, go fucking do something. I'm going <laughs> to kill you, man. I listen. I, I know, I know we have to go, but I have to ask you a question. Yeah. Go. Um, tell me about, so you train with Drew, right? At his school thing. Is that yeah. It? Yeah. So tell me, how does that work? Because truthfully, like I, I'm not one to, to speak on people's but There's a stigma between, behind that school. I'm not sure if you guys know that. Well, it, it's felt, I think, the stigma, right? Yeah. I think, I mean, you get, you hear a lot of people talk. I just, I came there four or five years ago as, uh, you know, I was 34 years old. I'm not young. I was already a man. I didn't really want to get when I knew, I didn't know anything about for real the the business of professional wrestling. So for me, it was kind of like I got taught pretty much not just the athletic like the move part, like in the ring part, but the business behind it as well at Torture Chamber. So I associated myself to that school because I had heard it was the best school around to go learn how to be a professional wrestler. I came in there and I. Listen, man, I did my best to just stay away from when I started realizing that there was a lot of drama and wrestling. I'm like, I, I don't want to be part of this. If it becomes too much where it like makes me hate it, I'm, I'm not attached to this that much at first. But I was able to kind of just go, listen, I'm here for a purpose. And when I get my match, but as far as as the stigma, I mean, I've gotten a lot of great opportunities simply because I was trained at Torture Chamber and I'm extremely sure. grateful for that. Like I've was given, listen, I was put, titles were put on me by Federation because they saw that I came from a school that had a reputation of putting out good wrestlers. Yeah. And I was giving shots on roster, you know, on, in promotions that other guys with so green with no so little experience i just think that once people started noticing that i brought some sort of legitimacy because of my background because oh that guy used to fight for real and now he's in a business where he's trying to you know make it i think that yeah. also helped but as far as like a stigma like i never really thought about it to be honest because i know it's spoken about and we've you know like well, everybody I, I just told you like it's not it's not like a horrible bad thing i think a lot of people think that you guys work there and you don't work or you're i'm not sure if you're not allowed to work anywhere else or i like i just hear whispers of stuff I yeah that, truthfully people can go wherever the fuck like they that, want and do whatever fucking life they want i would prefer for people to get trained properly and not be a weird kind of well you can just work for us and if you work for somebody else if money comes to me I don't like that stuff, but it, it looks like a, maybe a new way of doing things. So I'm, I might be completely out of the loop when it comes to that. Yeah, I've heard that. We've all heard. And it was even, you know, it's brought up. I, I mean, you can ask Drew. He'll bring it up. because He's heard it, too. It's like I have never been stopped from going anywhere. And I made it really clear from the beginning. Like me and Drew have this relationship where it's like, yeah, he's my coach. I'm his student. Yeah. He taught me everything I know in the business of professional wrestling. But we also have this a different kind of understanding because we're, I think, closely more close in age than age, the yeah. majority of, of the other students, right? So we kind of, I've been through the grind a little and I've been, you know, I've been stomped on too in life. So I kind of got that experience too and how to deal with uh, certain things a certain way. Yeah. But I, I was, it's so funny because when I started in wrestling, I was a wrestling fan from a young age. And I always said, Oh, I want to be a professional wrestler. And then at 34 years old, I, I get to do this. And when I got into the, I knew nothing about indie wrestling. I was a mark simply for WWE. And I was like, Oh, there's this, there's this yeah. new world behind this thing that I had to learn. But I when I realized that I didn't have to integrate myself in every single aspect of the business in order to perform in that ring, I was like, OK, let me see where I can navigate. Because, again, look, I'm a family guy. That's my important, most important thing in my life and my family and everything I do outside of the ring will always be more important. Right. 
for me, that's it. But hey, if I get to be yeah, a professional wrestler be. and get given a shot, but yeah, it's um, you hear things, but you you kind of try to like just you know and stay yeah, away yeah. from all the fucking drama. But I, as far there's as just work, fucking, yeah. like, there's always drama in wrestling. There's always someone talking shit, whatever the case may be. They, whatever why, and we we let in the worst people in wrestling. That that's something that's um upsetting to me is that we just let everybody in everybody in and i'm not saying like oh you don't let in certain people whatever it just at a, especially at a higher level like acting or whatever whatever pro profession theater whatever the case may be you have to pass through like things to be an actor or yeah be a you can't just go and be well i'm gonna act in theater now no it's not like that you have to be good at it you have to um, you have to get ready. Some guys just have natural talent. And like, I can name like a new guy here called Charlie Hoobly where he just woke up and he could jump fucking four feet high and he's just a natural talent. You know, some yeah. guys just like, that. but for the most part, people have to go to the gym and you have to work at this. And some people just decide that they don't want to or whatever, but they don't want to be, they don't want to be told that they have to do certain things to be a wrestler. So, but that, that that's upsetting to me. It's for someone that put his entire life into it, and I know that if I see two posters on a on a on a pole or a wall or whatever the case may be, two wrestling shows are promoted, and one is just guys in t-shirts and guys that are out of shape and whatever the case may be, and the other one is it's good. Most people see, let's say they see wrestling. Hey, we haven't seen wrestling in a long time. Let's go see wrestling. Yeah, and they go see this wrestling show with the fucking t-shirts and whatever the case may be. Um, they go see that, they come back, it's like, well, that's not what we used to watch, you know, or whatever. And, but they see my poster, they, they don't notice the name of like, well, this name is these three letters, and this guy is North Pro. They, re they just see wrestling. Mm -hmm. That's all they fucking see, man. So if they had a bad experience with this particular wrestling show, there's a good chance they're not going to watch this show. They're going to put... I, I hate that anybody can buy just a wrestling ring. Everybody can 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 wrestle and uh and you know no consequence and people get hurt well you know wrestling if somebody some, does something bad it's like well, well wrestling sucks it's like well fuck man it's not fucking us that's doing good things it's this fucking piece of shit over here that's just doing whatever it's like it dilutes the product at the end of the day right you yeah. get you get guys that look i I'd be the last guy to say anything. I, 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 like I said, like I just try to do my own thing and try to move forward. But man, I look sometimes and I go, man, I got to take an L to that guy. Like, have you yeah. seen him? And have you seen him? I'm, I'm like, do I need to explain any how a fight works? Like, I'm sorry. But I'm not going to say that being the fucking green guy going like, hey, dude, like this is the first time here. Shut your mouth. I'm like, all right. Bro. All you can do is be as realistic as possible. That's and right. That and and then even if you get pinned one, two, three, people know like, okay, well, you know what I mean? Like whatever. <laughs> so, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, my but, dad called me. Uh, speaking of my dad. Uh, uh, oh, but uh, I, um, I've always had respect for people that were willing, like the thing that I quickly noticed in professional wrestling is that number one, there's a lot of guys that do it for way too long. Meaning like, Man, like, I don't know what it is. I know what it is as an athlete to just stop being an athlete. I get it. Yeah. It's, it's fucking hard because it's your identity. Like, what are you now? There's a reason why I'm putting a lot of energy behind this podcasting and trying to build this network because I am, I need, I don't want my identity to be, I became a professional wrestler and, and then it was so consuming because if you want to be good at fucking being a pro wrestler, you got to give it everything you got. It's got to be, it's got to be your life. And for four years, it was my identity. And I, and then to be it for it to just be taken away. Sometimes it's like, God damn, like it all, it got taken away for everybody at this point. But that's what makes me feel a little better that it's not something that it's not something that you did. It's not something that I did. It's just, it got taken away, you know, yeah. it's, it's, Everyone's going through it. The best, well, WWE, AEW aren't going through it, but the best indie guys in the world are going through it. So, yeah. Just have to ride the wave and hopefully we get to a point where we get to get back to a little bit of normalcy, right? Fucking hopefully. Man. 
Marcus, thanks a lot for doing this. I really appreciate you accepting my invitation. And uh, we had a great talk. I enjoyed it, really, man. It was really Me fun, too, man. Dude. That was fun. Yeah, let's do that again uh, in uh, three years. Whenever you're super popular, we'll do it again. Yeah, dude. Anytime, man. All right. We can do it again. Thanks a lot, man. All right, buddy. All right. Talk soon. Ciao.